And nigga, be real to yourself before you real with anybody else. What's the deal? What's the deal, baby? Hey, happy TGI Friday, man. Look, we back with some cook crack. You understand me? Listen, man. Uh, this whole situation, bro, this it's nothing to play with, man. So now we got to start realizing, okay, so they being new who actually killed. Well, this is my thing, right? This is just a theory, right? This former LAPD detective basically solved the case within a nutshell years ago, right? So what do that tell us? That tells us that this has something to do with the hierarchy. You see what I'm saying? Listen, the, the industry wanted them too dead, bro. You see what I'm saying? But let's be clear. Everybody didn't pay attention. Should specifically said that he will not testify against Keefe D. You understand what I'm saying? This is where the deal go come in. They want Diddy. You understand what I'm saying? Diddy is a billionaire. However, he accumulated his money. That's his business. That's his problems. But they won't Diddy. You understand what I'm saying? Now, we know he's not. He don't give a fuck about testifying on no New York nigga. He from California. You see what I'm saying? A lot of these dudes be out here, man. Look, cowboy and testified on his own homeboy and, it, and it's still good. So niggas don't want to hear that shit. You see what I'm saying? Now, what's going to happen now is. Y'all got to realize that. Should Knight play a big part in this shit too? Let's be clear. Puffy starts sweating bricks when they when when Tupac dropped that hit him up. That shit went platinum. You see what I'm saying? On top of that, he had to nigga, he was the number one in, in, on the top charts on the music scene. You see what I'm saying? He was a threat. Biggie was already losing his his momentum with that record. You see what I'm saying? On top of that, I, I fucked your wife. Man, look, nigga. Tupac slayed everybody from Lil C's to Diddy Junior Mafia. He knocked down everybody on that fucking song. You understand what I'm saying? So this shit is gonna go down to, on a whole nother level, bro. This is not only now. This is bigger than just who killed Tupac and, and, and Biggie. They know who killed Tupac and Biggie. This LA, this former LAPD detective is gonna bust this shit down. I have not seen it. I just seen a clip of it, and I said, "Oh no, man, we gotta cook this crack, baby." And so. Let's jump into a game. I'm gonna let y'all be the judge and the jury. Let's go. This is effectively have solved both these murders because we have corroborated co-confessing uh, co-conspirators that are confessing. So that's where we go to the department. Uh, we say, listen, we've got all the goods. Uh, our the department then has their attorneys reach out to Valletta Wallace in the estate and say, listen, we've got uh, new information in the case. It undermines and refutes your civil case. You can continue to pursue that and spend money, but this is where we're going with it. Valletta Wallace, an attorney, at the, hearing that, they decide that they're going to retract their lawsuit. It's dismissed in the whole God, case. 400 million. The whole case. Never happened. The whole case goes away. You've said that you believe behind all of this is is uh, is puffy you've said this yourself with a million dollars whether it was a million dollars whether it was a half a million dollars tell us a little bit about that what i believe happened with with puffy was that again I, I don't think he wanted this conflict to get worse than it already was and if he could figure out a way to quell that he would in fact uh we have a statement saying that puffy had reached out to um, the members of the Nation of Islam to approach Suge Knight and say, hey, let's have a peace treaty. Let's squash this thing that Suge wanted nothing to do with it. So he was trying to get out from under this imposing threat, knowing that Suge held him responsible for the murder of his friend. And whenever he would come to L.A., he knew that Suge Knight was trying to hunt him down. Uh, we have a, re a reported incident, an investigation where Suge Knight had accosted one of his associates at a Christmas party in Los Angeles, and they beat the living shit out of this guy. He almost lost his eye in an attempt uh, for these guys to um, gain knowledge about where he lived in Los Angeles. 
so he undoubtedly becomes aware of the fact that these guys are actively hunting me mm. down. They're kidnapping, assaulting people. Uh, my life's definitely in harm's way. And so I think that out of that desperation and fear, he turned to the streets and said, can you guys kind of handle this for me? Um, because he knew that if you're going to deal with these gang members, then the best thing to do is get their natural enemies to, you know, to, uh, to do the work for you. And is that the million dollars? A million dollars. So what people got to understand is this, listen, it's at that time, remember the East coast was predominantly running the music scene. The West coast was already about to dump where they was dominating. The West Coast took over the music scene. You got to realize that this shit is stemming to, to the masses of the music industry as well. This the, It was a pun. You got to realize that they, they they pressured Diddy. You see what I'm saying? Biggie was not projecting those numbers that Tupac had and Suge Knight had the front row seat and, and, and the front lead in the music industry. You see what I'm saying? Everything stemmed from California. You see what I'm saying? New York had it at that time. The West Coast took over. Came out with, with Dr. Dre, N.W.A., Tupac, nigga, it was on fire. You got to look at it like this, right? This is all over music. You see what I'm saying? Now, the West Coast is the mecca of game banging. Yeah, you got dope boys all over the United States. You see what I'm saying? Biggie, he was cool, but he wasn't he, he wasn't marketable. At that time, his music was good. You see, don't get me wrong. Everybody loved Junior Mafia and, and, and Juicy. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in the day, I, Man, I was, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Used to hit that bitch from the back, you understand? Used to knock the lining out her put up. Man, put on, nigga, juicy, uh, nigga, what, nigga, oh, uh, man. I remember I was a skinny nigga. I had this thick bitch. I tried to get her on my arms and knock her like this until I dropped that bitch. <laughs> bitch fell on her head and shit. She didn't give me no more pussy, but <laughs> it was what it was, cuz. But at the same time, niggas got to understand, bro. Let's be clear. Tupac was on fire. Biggie, nigga, he couldn't compete with Tupac. You see what I'm saying? Did Tupac lie about who shot him? It's possible. We got to understand that it's possible. Tupac ain't perfect. You got to realize what that man then went through. Brenda had a baby. Nobody ever projected a record like that. That nigga, it's, that song was like Picasso. And then the video dropped. Come on, that's, bro, that took over the industry, bro. Like, niggas. We ain't never seen that. You still to this day, there's not a single soul that can paint a, a picture as well as Tupac did. But this was pressure on, on Puffy. Puffy had his hands was tied. The industry put this all in route, right? You see what I'm saying? This is why I say Diddy already is on the indictment list. They finna take down Diddy for sure, man. Let's go. Watch this. Oh, let me go. All right. Their lawsuit, it's just out of Wallace. That's where we go to the department. Uh, we say, listen, we've got all the goods. Uh, our, the department then has their attorneys reach out to Valletta Wallace in the estate and say, listen, we've got uh, new information in the case. It undermines and refutes your civil case. You can continue to pursue that and spend money, but this is where we're going with it. Valletta Wallace, an attorney, at that hearing that, they decide that they're going to retract their lawsuit. It's dismissed. And the whole case. Four hundred million. The whole case. Never happened. The whole case goes away. You've said that you believe behind all of this is is uh, is puffy. You've said this yourself with a million dollars, whether it was a million dollars, whether it was a half a million dollars. Tell us a little bit about that. What I believe happened with, with Puffy was that again, I, I don't think he wanted this conflict to get worse than it already was and if he could figure out a way to quell that he would in fact uh we have a statement saying that puffy had reached out to um the members of the nation of islam to approach suge knight and say hey let's have a peace treaty let's squash this thing but suge wanted nothing to do with it so he was trying to get out from under this imposing threat knowing that suge held him responsible for the murder of his friend and whenever he would come to la he knew that suge knight was trying to hunt him down uh, we have a, re a reported incident. An All right, so y'all remember what we talked about yesterday. Let's stop right there. That's when Puffy's bodyguard, Eugene, told him, hey, I got intel that Suge Knight is coming up here to try to knock somebody down, trying to kill somebody. Diddy 
disregarded that intel that he got from Eugene. This is why Eugene was so hurt, and he took all those, he did all those interviews. He went on a, a, a podcast tour. He specifically, and it's been consistent from the 90s until current. He's been consistent with his same story. You cannot deny the fact. See, when we look at, and I'm a hood nigga, right? I look at shit like, man, hey, listen, you tell somebody a story three times and nine out of ten is going to change. You see what I'm saying? But when it stays the same, that's when you know a motherfucker telling the truth. Now, remember, everybody tried to say that it was a drive-by. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just rolled up on 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 on, 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 on Biggie's car, on car. Now, them, when them dudes left the party, they knew which way they was coming out. When they got to that light, that dude was already parked on the side. Then he seen the car, drove off, and that's when they let out and, and, and blew that nigga Biggie down. You see what I'm saying? Then after they got done blowing Biggie down, them niggas hit that right. Then he turned back around and check on Biggie. Why you niggas didn't go chase down that car? You niggas had mop sticks in that. Man, y'all niggas, look, listen, homie. We not go, we not gonna play dumb. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, I've been in a situation, nigga. You busting at the homies, nigga. We jumping out, nigga. We about to blow you down. We not finna. He ain't finna go. You already shot the car up. Why would you go check on the... It ain't nothing you can do. Nigga, you need to knock that car down so they don't get away with this shit. You see what I'm saying? This is why I say pay attention to the detail, gang. It was not no drive-by. Them niggas didn't just drive. Them niggas was already parked there. You see what I'm saying? This We talking about Wilshire. It's, on, it's only a one-way street. You can't go the other way unless you make an illegal turn. Where they was at at that club on Wilshire... That's it. That's in, in Miracle Mile, right? A lot of y'all not from California, but it's a on that side they was on. It's only one way. You see what I'm saying? Unless you make a legal turn and go the other way, ain't nobody finna do all that. If the fire department was there, cause the they, the club got closed due to it was the capacity was too big. You understand what I'm saying? So when them dudes knew that the, when they knew Biggie's convoy was coming that way, them niggas was already lurking. They was. Come on, man. This is like some real LA street shit. Like, nigga, you know it's only one way. All a nigga gotta do is sit tight, wait for that, that car to pull up. They pull up, right? Why? What a coincidence. Puffy is in the front, Biggie is in the back. They get to the front light. They ran the light, which left Biggie right there. Them niggas blew that nigga down. That nigga, nigga Lil C's admitted it. Eugene admitted it. Diddy knew exactly what was happening. He knew he sacrificed Biggie's life, man. They, the industry, look, if you took out Tupac, you got to take out Biggie. That was the only way that he can really rise to fame, to be a multi-billionaire. That was the only way. Look how many people he didn't fucked over in the industry and never got sued. He didn't took everybody's publishing and nobody made a dollar. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Let's go. Investigation where Suge Knight had accosted one of his associates at a Christmas party in Los Angeles and they beat the living shit out of this guy. He almost lost his eye in an attempt uh, for these guys to um, gain knowledge about where he lived in Los Angeles. Uh, so he undoubtedly becomes aware of the fact that these guys are actively hunting me mm. down. They're kidnapping, assaulting people. Uh, my life's definitely in harm's way. And so I think that out of that desperation and fear, he turned to the streets and said, can you guys kind of handle this for me? Um, because he knew that if you're going to deal with these gang members, then the best thing to do is get their natural enemies to, you know, to, uh, to do the work for you. And is that the million dollars? A million dollars was on the... According to Keefe D, he says there is a kind of a loose conversation at Greenblatt's at Bunks on Set in which Puffy uh, allegedly tells Keefe D, um, listen, I'm a, whatever, it, whatever it takes to get these guys off my back, I need you to take care of them. He says we wanted a million dollars. Diddy's like whatever. But again, I have to couch that with the understanding that he was in fear. You, you understand? So now, now do you understand why people say, oh, Puffy's not going to jail? This shows the connection. You understand what I'm saying? After that's, listen, they can, they can, they, it's, listen, who introduced Keefe D to Puff Daddy? Eric Zip Martin. 
Eric Zip Martin been going, getting that Bobby Brown. For y'all that don't know Bobby Brown, nigga, that's that heroin. You know what I'm saying? If I say Whitney Houston, that's that cocaine. You understand me? Boy and girl, for those that don't really know the streets. But think about it. Zip Martin, Eric Zip Martin was coming to California to get that Bobby Brown. You understand what I'm saying? That's, it was getting it from the Southside Compton Crips or whoever that had the plug on that, that had, Keefy D was, that was Keefy D lane right there, right? So when we looking at that, we got to understand who is Eric Zip uh, Martin. Eric Zip Martin is a is a is a New York nigga from Harlem, a dope dealer kingpin nigga that had ties with Biggie and with Puffy. You see what I'm saying? So if they can tie Puffy to Eric Zip Martin and Eric Zip Martin to Keefy D, then now you can see exactly where they go tie Puffy in at on this case. It's no way that you can exonerate him from this because at the end of the day. Follow the money trail. Where's the so the money was dushed out? Zip was the one that was supposed to give that million dollars to Keefy D, but he never did. Nigga, that's a million dollars. Man, let me see. Uh, you got D Mac in here, nigga. Somebody said, Hey, Nina boy, give D Mac a million dollars. Nigga, with an unmarked check, and nigga, I don't really nigga. I'm just doing dope. I'm doing business transaction. Nigga, I'm gonna take that million dollars, nigga. I'm gonna go down to San Diego, nigga, and nigga, get my shit right. Go get me an armor truck. I mean, go get me an armor little navigator or something like that, nigga. Bulletproof, nigga. Put some money under the ground somewhere, and I'm gonna go swing over there in Mexico and hide out for a little bit, nigga. And, nigga in Rosarita or something, nigga, in a mansion, nigga. Nigga, and if I want a little murder mommy to pull up, nigga, I got a little bitch look like Kim Kardashian, you know, somebody pulling over. Nah. I like chocolate, man. I, you know, give me, give me some chocolate, man. I don't, you know, and yeah. my boy, you get the pillow fighting with your light skinned bitch. Boom, boom, this bitch turn purple, and she go outside. Oh, who beat you, <laughs> nigga? Fuck around at police. Hey, hey, we got a domestic violence. Show. I'm like over a pillow fight. Man, that bitch turned purple over the pillow. Yeah, that bitch was. She was jumping out of her body and shit, and I just whack that man. <laughs> In the corner pillow, smacked her eye and turned it purple. And, oh, he beat her. I don't got time for that shit, man. Give me, give me, give me some milling on your skin, bitch. <laughs> All right, let me stop playing, man. All right, let's get it. I know I gotta come with that real shit, baby. <laughs> let's go. For his life. Uh, no, I fully get that. Yeah, I fully get that. So, but the million dollars is from him, but you don't know really if it's a million dollars or it's a half a million dollars. I just think it's just boastful talking. Okay, got you it. You know, it's like I saw if I see a, a really nice car that I like to purchase from you, and I just, man, I'll give you a million dollars for that. Yeah. It's just that kind okay. of like loose. So, um, how about the part where where Zip gives him the gun? He says, listen, that right now is the time to do it. Everyone's in town. Go to 662. Mm -hmm. Here's a gun that I have. He leaves it to him with the car. Right. Uh, he gives him the gun. And then afterwards, when they talk on a call, he says, was that us? And they're on the call together listening. And Zip says, yes, that was us. Keefe says, yes, that was us. Yes, that was us. Yeah. Keefe says, that was mm -hmm. us. And then then he says, we'll take care. Zip says, we'll take care of the money. But, but again, wait, 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 have... wait. So I need you to understand this. This is, this is where they're talking about uh, Zip Martin. This is the connection between Puffy and Keefe D. So they have established information to show and prove that Puffy was doing business with Zip Martin and Zip Martin was doing business with, with Keefe D, right? Zip Martin manipulated the opportunity. Look, they was still already in, they was already in route, bro. They was already in route to go ahead and, and get that money, right? Now they was already, they, the fight is over, right? They just jumped Orlando Anderson, right? We got that. After that, Everybody spread out. They're getting ready to go to the club 662. That's the club, right? The club Tupac had to appear for because Tupac was had to do community service. He had to perform for a, 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 a off-duty officer or some shit like that. They worked out some little situation where it was going to be, you know, people there and all that shit. He had to perform. Yeah, that shit crazy because, nigga, I'm a hood, nigga. I'm not going to perform, nigga. I'm not no circus. I'm not no clown, nigga. I don't work at the circus, nigga. I'm not going to... Go, nigga, rap some nigga, you know what I'm saying? Some shit, nigga. Hit him up in front of the police, nigga. <laughs> you understand me? Niggas got their phone. No, they ain't, they ain't got the. We talking about the 90s. They, they didn't have they didn't have social media like that back then. So recant that. But going forward, understand this. Keefe D and, and, and Zip Martin was already. He said, nigga, hey, they jumped my nephew. I don't got no gun. Guess who gave him the gun? Zip Martin. If Zip Martin gave Keefe D the gun, that's still 
tying him to Diddy already sent the check to Zip, right? Zip was gonna get the murder done regardless. So that way, even if he backdoor it, Keefy D, he still could say, Look, I still got Tupac killed for you and should. The goal was to kill. Now, now I it, you know, I, I was kind of tripped. I'm like, why would you give up a million dollars? But then again, five hundred thousand for for Suge, five hundred thousand for for Tupac. I can understand that now. You see what I'm saying? So Tupac wasn't just the only target. He wanted big. He wanted um Suge Knight dead too. Suge Knight was the most ruthless nigga at that time in his prime. Now I wouldn't be surprised, man. That nigga sixty some years old, nigga. I bet you, nigga, Suge Knight can't run no block, nigga. That nigga in there, nigga eating cup of noodles and, and zuzus and wham whams in that motherfucker, nigga. I I bet you, Suge Knight ain't had a fight in over fifteen years. You understand me? That nigga big ain't nobody gonna fuck with that nigga, but they tried that nigga. He only got about five seconds. That nigga, but hey, hold on, blood. Ooh, hey, nigga, kidney, nigga. I got cataract. I can't see. <laughs> you understand me? He don't got it no more. That man, look. I know a lot of old school. Hey, fuck you, John Turkey. Back in '78, nigga, I used to get out, nigga, with the cramp, nigga, I was doing a thing, baby. Hoo, 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 hoo. You know, eh, eh. <laughs> fuck around. But look. Now we can establish the connection. If if Zip Martin gave Keefy D that gun, that puts Puff Daddy right there at the forefront. Because still, regardless of what happened with Orlando, he paid the check. He wrote the check to make sure that Diddy, I mean Tupac and um and Suge Knight get assassinated. You see what I'm saying? It didn't matter that they beat up Orlando Anderson. If they still carried out that mission, even attempted murder, he's still going, he still got a role in that. Let's go. Hey, man. Hey, look, man. I don't point no angles, man. I just point out the obvious, man. You understand me? Let's go. To couch that with the understanding that he was in fear for his life. It's I, not I fully it, get that. Yeah, I fully get that. So, But the million dollars is from him, but you don't know really if it's a million dollars. I think right it's far. just boastful talking. Okay, got You it. know, it's like I saw if I see a a really nice car that i like to purchase from you. And I said, man, I'll give you a million dollars for that. Yeah. It's just that kind okay. of like loose. So um, how about the part where where Zip gives him the gun? He says, listen, that right now is the time to do it. Every once in town, go to 662. Mm -hmm. Here's a gun that I have. He leaves it to him with the car. Right. Uh, he gives him the gun. And then afterwards, when they talk on a call, he says, was that us? And they're on the call together listening, and Zip says, yes, that was us. Keefe says, yes, that was us. Yes, that was us. Yeah. Keefe says, that was mm -hmm. us. And then then he says, we'll take care. Zip says, we'll take care of the money. Six weeks later, he's not getting the money. And, you know, he's finding out maybe he didn't get paid. And then afterwards, he meets with an associate of P. Diddy, St. Puffy, saying, yeah, we did pay. But, but Zip kept money. it. And then when they met, is that all been verified that maybe... He did keep the money or they did not pay. We don't have anything to validate other than his claim. Got it. He's claiming that he had people that were closely associated with Eric, that uh, with Zip, that told him, hey, Puffy paid a half a million dollars and uh, Zip kept the money. So that's his claim. Uh, we do know that these two people do exist and that they were associated with him, but those people have never verified that. Uh, so that uh, that unpaid debt is... Uh, it was definitely not right, collected. Right, all right, let's get to it. Wait, wait, So wait. why, that's, that's why were you... Re that's some good shit, man. Let's let's back it up a little, just a little bit. All right, so let me get to some of the questions. What's happening, everybody that's in the comments? Salute, salute, salute. Uh, if they knew all this back then, why wasn't anyone arrested? Come on. They actually relieved this former LAPD off detective of, of, of his duties. See, yeah, I got to realize, bro, look. Hey, um, y'all gotta realize the the officer that was fucking Suge Knight, motherfucking wife, ex-wife, got knocked down by another officer. Come on, bro, this it's a it, man. This shit is this shit go up the man. We talking about man. Some of these niggas was pies and nigga and, and this dog fight, nigga. Some niggas was dog food. You understand what I'm saying? This shit being solved. Just have everything to do with money, power, the industry, and the government. You understand what I'm saying? When when the president went on that in that live and said something about Brennan's had a baby and Tupac music, we knew that that's when they labeled him a revolutionary. We knew that he was a that every great leader get assassinated 
Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Look at all the people from the Black Party um, movement. A lot of them dudes, a lot of the people from the from the Black Panthers was assassinated by the police. You got those times that they was living it. Mind you, they just coming out the 80s. You see what I'm saying? Going into the 90s, into the mid-90s. Bro, Tupac, what he represented and, and how he painted his pictures with his music, it was Picasso. It, it was so velvet. It was... It was unprecedented. This was something that people never seen ever. We, yeah, you got, I don't want to disrespect all the ancient niggas back in the day, man. That shit, hey, I ain't trying to debunk no old school music. I love it. You understand me? Hey, man, look, back, shit, before rap, nigga, they, and that Grand Night and Fifth, you know what I'm saying? Beverly and Frank and May, you understand me? You know, back in 88, you know, them girls had that little fur burger. Yeah, you know, them little dames had little wolf pussy, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? A little bitch could, could, Put cornrows on her pussy hair. <laughs> Let me stop. Just go up. Look at those times, gang. This have government. This have industry all over this shit, bro. This is not nothing to play with, bro. This is something so serious that, you know, in, in, in retrospect, yeah, look, this is a 20-something year old situation, man. Anything that we saying, man, this is just, think about it. I look at this situation as if I'm going pro pro and, and pro per in court. You see what I'm saying? I would pretty much know how to handle my own weight in that motherfucker because I spoke to y'all last time. 75 to 80% of the people that's incarcerated in jail plea bargain, take a deal. They never go to trial because regardless, the lawyer or somebody be like, man, you know, man, they got you on this. I don't know if I can beat that. And then your inner conscience say, oh, I really did it, so I'm guilty. Let me just take this 15 fucking years and not even knowing that you don't know what your defense have. See, that when you go to lit litigation and all, man, learn your rights, bro. Learn your rights. Learn your constitutional rights. Learn your Miranda rights. Learn this shit. You see what I'm saying? Because if I get in a situation and you my crime and shit, nigga, better believe I'm reading everything that I got to look at what I'm charged against. It's right now. They're charging Keefe D for murder and gang enhancement. <laughs> gang enhancement. We talking about some 30 years ago. That's just the only two. You cannot believe that they're only. Man, look, they're finding new charges on this shit every day, right? You got to understand, man. They, they, they stall in time. This is, this is just a. This is a cesspool. This is a cesspool at this point, bro. They stalling time. They finna crack down. I'm telling you, don't be surprised when you see Snoop Dogg, Jada Pickett. This is this is how big this case is gonna be. Mark my word. I'm like, damn, Nina, I mean, because I see through limo tent. That's why, nigga. That's why I tell people all the time. If you hang around a lot of people, your life is destined to uh to die. You you're destined to die faster when you have a lot of people that you hang with around your life. Man, you subtract some of them people out your life, you'll live way longer, gang. Let's go. Y'all hit that like button, man. Hit that like button, man, if you love your mama. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, some some grandma hit me the other day, like, ooh, that young man over there. Ooh, what that boy name? That boy, Nina boy. Shit, if he was born back in 64, I gave him some of this good sugar. <laughs> I said, no, nah, you keep them granny panties, baby. But, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's get it. Ah, oh, shit, I went to the wrong one. All right, let's go. Understanding that he was in fear for his life. I, no, I fully get that. Yeah, I fully get that. So, But the million dollars is from him, but you don't know really if it's a million dollars or it's a half a million dollars. I just think it's just boastful talking. Okay, got you it. You know, it's like I saw, if I see a, a really nice car that I like to purchase from you, and I just, man, I'll give you a million dollars for that. Yeah, it's just that kind okay. of like loose bless, um, the parts where, where Zip gives him the gun. He says, listen, that right now's the time to do it every once in town. Go to 662. Here's a gun that I have. He leaves it to him with the car. Right. Uh, he gives him the gun. And then afterwards, when they talk on a call, he says, was that us? And they're on the call together listening. And Zip says, yes, that was us. Keefe says, yes, that was us. Yes, that was us. Yeah. Keefe says that was mm -hmm. us. And then. Then he says, we'll take care. Zip says, we'll take care of the money. Six weeks later, he's not getting the money. Boom. And, oh, that's right. you know, he's finding out maybe he right, didn't get look, paid. And then, we gonna get back and to then afterwards. Look, that's it right there. Regardless of the fact that Orlando Anderson got, got, got beat up, right? That doesn't matter. The ultimate goal for, for Puffy was to make sure that that car got wet up. You see what I'm saying? And Keefe D confirmed that to Zip Martin. 
Yeah, that was us. We did that. He said, no worry about it. We're going to take care of the money. So the murder for hire is still in play at this point. Regardless, look, Orlando Anderson wasn't even tripping <clears throat> off the scuffle. You see what I'm saying? That wasn't even no big deal. They, you got to realize, bro. Think about it. This all stems from Trayvon Lane from Mafia, right? From from my, not Mafia, my part, my Piru. Oh, from my Piru, Orlando Anderson and them, the Southside Compton Crips took that boy Chain over there at the Lakewood Mall, right? All right, cool. Y'all catch him at the MGM. Get your get back. All right, boom. All right, whatever. He get up, dust it off. He says arm fucked up a little bit. If his arm is fucked up, right? How was he the shooter? This is confirmation. Listen, KBD went on multiple interviews and said that Orlando Anderson said that his arm is fucked up because niggas then kicked his arm. How the fuck can you shoot after being jumped, my nigga, in your arm? Right now, nigga, my arm is still fucked up from a year ago. So I know, nigga, I can't, nigga, just be, nigga, busting with one hand. Nigga, at least I had two to be able to do that, motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? He said an uh, arm came out. You understand what I'm saying now? It's yet to be determined which arm. But that nigga was... And y'all know if you been in a fight, no fucking fight. If you ever been jumped, it feel like a car accident. You understand me, nigga? Trust me, nigga. I didn't been through some jumps and nigga, I didn't, nigga, hey, I didn't, nigga, felt like a, a train didn't hit a nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So I, this is why I say Orlando Anderson was not the shooter. Baby Lane didn't shoot Tupac, bro. You see what I'm saying? Now, is Keepy D lying? Absolutely. Hell yeah, he lying. But is it some things that he said that he's been saying? That's what got him right now in this situation. This is why, think about it. They could have been charged. They could have been refiled this case in 2018. They could have refiled 19. They could have refiled in, in, in 2020, 21, 22. Why 2023? Somebody didn't want to play ball no more. Somebody did not play ball with the industry or the masses. You see what I'm saying? And they was even making threats or allegations being said that they go take down some of the people that had some involvement with this shit. On top of that, this is taxpayers' money. You know, if what people don't realize, especially in the state of Nevada, there's no statute of limitation on no murder. You catch a body out here in Nevada. There's no limit, nigga. It could be 40 years. Nigga, you could be old and trash. <laughs> Your ass going down. <laughs> Yeah, nigga, better pay attention, gang. Let's go. He meets with an associate of P. Diddy, saying, Puffy, saying, yeah, we did pay, but, but he Zip kept money. it. And then when they met, is that all been verified that maybe he did keep the money or they did not pay? We don't have anything to validate other than his claim. Got it. He's claiming that he had people that were closely associated with Eric, that uh, with Zip, that told him, hey, Puffy paid a half a million dollars and uh, Zip kept the money. So that's his claim. Uh, we do know that these two people do exist and that they were associated with him, but those people have never verified that. Uh, so that uh, that unpaid debt is uh, it was definitely never collected. So why why were you removed from the case in 2009 or, to, you know, a year before your retirement? Why did they? I mean, obviously, the show is called Unsolved, right, right. on uh, Netflix. Why was it like, listen, you're going a little too deep with this. Stop what you're doing. We're going to we're going to remove you and go a different direction. For the LAPD, once we bring them the confession of Keefe D, their attitude is like, OK, well, that's Las Vegas's case. Pass all the information you have on Tupac's murder to Las Vegas, let them deal with Keefe D, let them follow up and, 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 and handle their own uh, murder case. With Biggie's case, now the LAPD is out from under this massive loss. Wait a minute, yeah, are y'all paying attention? <laughs> Listen, at this point in time, Keefe D lived in California. You see what I'm saying? They wanna, they wanna throw the case back to Vegas. Yeah, it happened in Vegas, but y'all wanna throw it back to, man, bro. Come on, <laughs> this this shit I'm talking about right here. Man, this man, this man was fired from his job because he solved the case. They said, nigga, you doing too much, nigga. Hey, we didn't, hey, we didn't pay you overtime just for you to find out all this information, bro. He knew that Puffy and Shug, man, it's going to, it's going to be a battle of West Coast, East Coast. 
Puffy tried to kill. Well, Puffy had Tupac killed and tried to have Suge killed, right? And Suge doubled back and had Biggie killed because of Tupac's murder. Come on, man. Y'all, let's be clear. Y'all remember when Keefe D did that interview where he said the day before the fight, mind you, let's, let's rewind it for a minute, right? Let's go back to it. Keefe D in the interview said that Suge Knight, the day before the fight, walked up to his car in valet because they was all at the MGM, right? So you ran into Keefe D the day before the fight. You shook his hand and said, what up, big dog? How is that possible, right? Let's go back. Let's, let's go back in time. Say, for instance, you know, you a reputable on your side. I'm a reputable on my side. Your side, nigga, beat up my nephew. I mean, beat up my motherfucking homeboy and took his motherfucking chain. You took my homeboy chain and jumped him at the mall. And then I see you weeks, I mean, at the fight in Vegas the night before, the day before the fight. And I walk up to your car and say, what's up, big dog? Come on, mind you. Orlando Anderson beat up Tray Trayvon Lane from my Pyro. Them niggas beat him up, jumped him, took his chain. The niggas ran back to Suge like, hey, nigga, them, them Southside Compton Crip niggas took the chain, bro. They jumped me at the mall. Oh, where they at? Nigga, let's go. Them niggas didn't see him. Then you see these niggas in Vegas. You jump out. You see the niggas say, what up, big dog? So you ain't tripping at a nigga stole a death row. If, if, if Suge Knight let his homeboy get jumped at a mall, and you run into the nigga who jumped your homeboy at the mall, took a chain that you gave that nigga. That's like stealing from you. Suge Knight was supposed to be this alleged ruthless ass nigga, right? If Suge did not do nothing to the niggas that he seen in his face that jumped his homeboy, if you would, listen, a nigga jump my homeboy and I catch you, bro, I'm finna run that fair one with you, win or lose. Whether you win or lose, nigga, I'm at least I'm like, yeah, nigga, I ran that shit with that nigga. You see what I'm saying? It don't matter how it went. Nigga, I, I revenge your jump, nigga. Bottom line. You see what I'm saying? And you talking about nigga Sugar who said, what up, big dog shook your hand, knowing that your nephew and them beat up his homeboy and took his chain? That's why I say the lies is starting to come in at, bro. It's, it's, it's not adding up. Let's go. Dollars, ditties, like whatever. But again, I have to couch that with the understanding that he was in fear for his life. Uh, no, I fully get that. Yeah, I fully get that. So, but the million dollars is from him, but you don't know really if it's a million dollars or it's a half a million dollars. I think it's just boastful talking. Okay, got you it. know, it's like I saw if I see a, a really nice car that I like to purchase from you, and I just, man, I'll give you a million dollars for that. Yeah, it's just that kind okay. of like loose. So, um, how about the part where where Zip gives him the gun? He says, "Listen, that right now is the time to do it. Every once in town, go to six six two. Here's a gun that I have. He leaves it to him with the car. Right. Uh, he gives him the gun." And then afterwards, when they talk on a call, he says, was that us? And they're on the call together listening. And Zip says, yes, that was us. Keefe says, yes, that was us. Yes, that was us. Yeah. Keefe says, that was mm -hmm. us. And then then he says, we'll take care. Zip says, we'll take care of the money. Six weeks later, he's not getting the money. And, you know, he's finding out maybe he didn't get paid. And then afterwards, he meets with an associate of P. Diddy, St. Puffy, saying, yeah, we did pay. But, but Zip the kept money. it, and then when they met, is that all been verified that maybe he did keep the money or they did not pay? We don't have anything to validate other than his claim. Got it. He's claiming that he had people that were closely associated with Eric, that uh, with Zip, that told him, hey, Puffy paid a half a million dollars, and uh, Zip kept the money. So that's his claim. Uh, we do know that these two people do exist and that they were associated with him, but those people have never verified that. Uh, so that uh, that unpaid debt is uh, it was definitely never collected. So why why were you removed from the case in 2009 or, to, you know, a year before your retirement? Why did they? I mean, obviously, the show is called Unsolved, right, right? on uh, Netflix. Why was it like, listen, you're going a little too deep with this. Stop what you're doing. We're gonna we're gonna remove you and go a different direction. For the LAPD, once we bring them the confession of Keefe D, their attitude is like, okay, well, that's Las Vegas's case. Ask all the information you have on Tupac's murder to Las Vegas. Let them deal with Keefe D. Let them follow up and and and, and handle their own uh, murder case. With Biggie's case, now the LAPD is out from under this massive lawsuit. They're breathing a sigh of relief. They've just spent 
millions of dollars conducting this investigation with wiretaps and narcotics buys and all of this, you know, it was a large operation. And at that point in time, they realized prosecu prosecution-wise, it's going to be very, very difficult to take the remaining co-conspirators, which at that time really consisted of Keefe D, Eric Martin, and Diddy, and prosecute these guys based on the sole testimony Man, come on, bro. Come on. Y'all hear that? Come on, gang. Look, Keefe D, Eric Martin, and, and Diddy. These are the three key players that's in the game, bro. I don't know what niggas is, what, what niggas is on, but, you know, when you a street motherfucker, this should, this, should, this should have all the hood niggas like, damn, bro. Like, you know how niggas, when we be in county jail and shit, niggas like, hey, bro, what you in here for? Oh, man, they going to give you this, man. Well, this this should be one of those moments. You see what I'm saying? Because when any nigga know when we in jail, nigga, you sitting in those holding tanks and I'm holding cells and shit, niggas be trying to figure out, nigga, who the sleeper? You know what I'm saying? Y'all know them sleepers that be in there because y'all know that the LAPD, they send decoys in those cells. You see what I'm saying? They send niggas in those cells to try to gather niggas' information and all that. That's why nigga be questioning nigga. Hey nigga, what you up in here for? Nigga, you, nigga, you over, the only nigga over there quiet and all that shit. You ain't mingling and shit. Yeah, that nigga one of them niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah, boy, that nigga. Yeah, uh, criminal. Uh, I ain't sorry, oh shit. Um, yeah, it's going down, bro. Shout out to Kev. Oh, big shout out to Terry Lewis, man. Y'all go check out Terry Lewis channel, man. One of the dudes that's solid, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'll be doing shout outs. Y'all want me to get y'all a shout out on y'all channel, man. Y'all jumping in DM and all that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything ain't for free now. It's always a fee unless you somebody that's that ride with me. You understand me? But uh, anyway, let's get into it, guy. Let's go. Of a convicted drug dealing gang member. So they realize that it's going to be very, very tough to um, prosecute these people. We spent enough time and energy on this. Greg, you're going to get reassigned back to cold case homicides. Everybody else go back to your respective agencies. And they just, that's it. But, yeah. But it's nothing bigger than that. It wasn't like, hey, let's try to find out more. Uh, you're, this is going to get us in trouble. We don't want to get more negativity behind it. Or maybe even some cops internally are trying to protect some people that are living. Mm -hmm. Any of those things could be possibilities or no? Not for me. Okay. Uh, not at all. I think it's just simply they were kind of indifferent about it. Like, hey, Valletta Wallace sued us. We spent a lot of money trying to defend this lawsuit. We've spent a whole lot of money trying to pursue the truth. We found that. And now we're just going to let sleeping dogs lie because we can't prosecute the case, you know, for all intent and purposes. It's not practical um, with 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 Biggie's murder. And so, you know, you've got an ex-girlfriend who's known to commit perjury. And she's going to take the stand and be the sole witness against Suge Knight saying that he, because this guy's dead, remember? Mm -hmm. And so now you've got this, you know, relationship. Now that, that we're talking about Suge Knight ex-wife. This is why the detective is, this is why he's breaking it down. Suge Knight ex-wife was fucking a police officer and he ended up dead. So they know Suge Knight paid for his murder. And that's why she was going to testify. Let's go. Chip between the two, and she's the only person you can put on the stand to, you know, point the finger at him. It's just not going to work out in court. And same thing with Tupac's murder. You know, these guys just don't have any credibility in so far as getting on the stand and testifying because of their backgrounds and their previous, you know, uh, convictions and status as gang members and and um, established perjurers. It's just complicated. And so even though you have this much evidence, it's still complicated. I mean, what, what that what that uh, what that then tells uh, a person watching, how is how are they protected at this point that, you know, this happened? You're not talking about a small brand. This guy was growing at a level that was pretty wild. And you're not talking about I'm not even talking here. Mm -hmm. I'm specifically staying here with the talent. They're the ones that's making the money. Right. They're, they're the ones creating the opportunity, but they're the ones that are doing the talent. Don't, isn't there a reason to want to go really find out the truth for not only fans, families, people involved, businesses involved with them? Isn't there a reason to even go deeper with that? Right. <laughs> you understand me? Listen, the, regardless how y'all paint that picture, Puff Daddy um, is, 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 is irrelevant. 
We're talking about Tupac and Biggie. East Coast, West Coast, West Coast, East Coast. These was the two machines that was making money in the industry. Mind you, hip hop at that point in time was dominating all charts. And we didn't give a fuck about no country and no pop and all that shit. Hip hop was dominating everything at that time. When you know about hip hop, we're not just talking about just rap. Just the culture of hip hop, breakdancing, beatboxing, all that. Listen, urban communities, everything, clothing lines. This is the reason why a lot of people have clothing lines and gear and merch and all of this. Hip hop was dominating in every aspect. People got to realize that a lot of them people at the masses, they starting to realize, hold on, people like Def Jam, those dope, people like Pub Daddy, they tried to keep us from accelerating for years, decades. And once this shit just blew off like a wildfire, wait a minute, they start looking at numbers. These guys are going to be multimillionaires. They already make all right, a million dollars. They not tripping. That's not a lot of money. But when we talking about 30, 40, 50, 100 million, come on, man. It was bad enough. People couldn't stand black people accelerating at those times. Mind you, we're talking about the 90s. If you take away the 90s and we talking about 80s, 60s, 50s, now we finna start going into those times. Nigga, remember, nigga, you know, 50s and 40s and all, man, it got ugly. You see what I'm saying? We just came out from all that bullshit and start to excel in life. Mind you, in the 80s, Nigga, it was nigga, it was a black screen with 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 green uh uh fonts on the computer screen. It wasn't no resolution and all this shit that's taking place right now, bro. It wasn't no MySpace and all that shit. Come on, gang, like this. Man, them books, man. I'm telling you, they've been hiding a lot of this shit in them books. But let me just say this real fast. Keefy D proper agreement, it was voided out. You see what I'm saying? This is why they say, okay, cool. This nigga still running his motherfucking mouth. That proper agreement that he had, it's it's it's, it's done. It's it's a statute of limitation on that proper agreement. This is why they said, boom. All right, Diddy, you ain't acting right. Oh, you you on some bullshit? Why you think he's trying to liquidate all his assets at this point right now? Because they coming for him. He knows that. You see what I'm saying? Not even that. But he knows that everybody is going to backdoor him. Everybody about to fold on Diddy. All they want to do is bring him out to the light. If they was able to have R. Kelly nigga, get away with all that little bullshit for 30 some years, come on, bro. And why did they do R. Kelly like that? Because he, they wanted his masters. He didn't want to give it up. He owned certain songs. Look what they did to, to Michael Jackson. They had the doctor kill him. It's the industry. You see what I'm saying? The industry, man, they're not going to let us ever get to the top. You think Jay-Z ain't no pawn? Think about it. Osama, I, I, Benton, I mean, Barack Obama, nigga, he was, he was a pawn. It don't matter how much money you make, bro. It, it, there's never going to be an African-American who has the most money in the world. It's no way in hell they're going to allow that. Yeah, you could be, nigga, a hundred million, a billionaire, Oprah a billionaire, but when we talking about a trillionaire, you name one tr black trillionaire in the world. You cannot name a trillionaire. A trillion. You understand me? $999 billion. <laughs> hundred, a trillionaire. You said a hundred motherfucking billion. <laughs> Come on, bro. Let's go. It, it it just don't add up, man. It, it... Well, there, you know, for us, I'm like, hey, let's try to find out more. Uh, you're, you, this is going to get us in trouble. We don't want to get more negativity behind it or just, just spent millions of dollars conducting this investigation with wiretaps and narcotics buys and all of this, you know, is a large operation. And at that point in time, they realize prosecute prosecution wise, it's going to be very, very difficult to take the remaining co-conspirators, which at that time really consisted of Keefe D, Eric Martin, and Diddy, and prosecute these guys based on the sole testimony of a convicted drug dealing gang member. So they realize that it's going to be very, very tough to um, prosecute these people. We spent enough time and energy on this. Greg, you're going to get reassigned back to cold case homicides. Everybody else go back to your respective agencies. And they just, that's it. But yeah.
But it had nothing bigger than that. It wasn't like, hey, let's try to find out more. Uh, you're, this is going to get us in trouble. We don't want to get more negativity behind it. Or maybe even some cops internally are trying to protect some people that are living. Mm -hmm. Any of those things could be possibilities or no? Not for me. Okay. Uh, you know, not at no. all. I think it's just simply they were kind of indifferent about it. Like, hey, Valletta Wallace sued us. We spent a lot of money trying to defend this lawsuit. We've spent a whole lot of money trying to pursue the truth. We found that. And now we're just going to let sleeping dogs lie because we can't prosecute the case. You know, for all intent and purposes, it's not practical um, with 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 Biggie's murder. And so, you know, you've got an ex-girlfriend who's known to commit perjury and she's going to take the stand and be the sole witness against Suge Knight saying that he because this guy's dead. Remember? Mm -hmm. And so now you've got this, you know, relationship between the two and she's the only person you can put on the stand, to, you know point the finger at him it's just not going to work out in court and same thing with Tupac's murder you know these guys just don't have any credibility in so far as getting on the stand and testifying because of their backgrounds and their previous you know uh convictions and status as gang members and and um established perjurers it's just complicated and so even though you have this much evidence it's still complicated i mean what what that what that uh, what that then tells uh, a person watching it, how is how are they protected at this point that you know this happened? You're not talking about a small brand. This guy was growing at a level that was pretty wild. And you're not talking about, I'm not even talking here. Mm -hmm. I'm specifically staying here with the talent. They're the ones that's making the money. Right. They're, they're the ones creating the opportunity, but they're the ones that are doing the talent. Don't, isn't there a reason to want to go really find out the truth for not only fans, families, people involved? businesses involved with them isn't there a reason to even go deeper with that well there you know for us there's a saying in in investigative circles it's not what you know it's what you can prove and knowing what happened is one thing but then going to court and successfully prosecuting people to bring them justice that's a different thing it's a, it's a different yeah man all right y'all so that's where we at with it man um like i said diddy was pressured by the industry, man. You see what I'm saying? They had to take out Puck, um, Biggie and Tupac, man. It was already written in stone. Um, I got a special guest coming up next week. Um, somebody who is a California, to me, uh, icon that come from the streets of California, you know, hood nigga that made it to the industry. Um, one, one of the hood niggas that, that made it out of Watts, California, man, and and jumped in one of those, you know what I'm saying, them Bentley things, you understand me? So y'all stay tuned, man. I want to thank y'all personally, because y'all could be anywhere, cause, but y'all pull up to fuck with Nina Boy, man. I want to say thank y'all. If y'all have not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Watch my journey, watch my lifestyle, man. And I'll see y'all next on the next video. Gang.